Okay, well, uh, thanks everybody for coming back after the short break. Um, I guess, as everybody said, I'm, I'm delighted to be here to present some of our, our research that we've been uh, working on for a long time now. Um, and I also have to apologise because I'm very, this is a very different presentation to the two that we've heard before. Um, I also have to apologise because I'm not a, a clinical person, I'm a technology person, so I could be talking the biggest load of rubbish. But I do know about technology, so um, that's about as much as I can say. Um, and this presentation is going to cover some of the work that we've been doing at university in collaboration with Utah State University in the US. Um, and the project was entitled Grey Matters, and it was about using technology to facilitate a behaviour change intervention. Um, so again, the topic's quite different to what we heard uh, in the previous two presentations. Um, as we know, we already talked about uh, a lot of the issues around um, mental health issues particularly for younger adults, but dementia is probably one of the biggest societal challenges that we, that we uh, face, um, particularly in the, the emerging economies. Um, lots of people being diagnosed with dementia, um, one every three seconds approximately across the world, and a huge amount of cost being attributed to dementia as well. At the university, particularly in the, the Computer Science Research Institute, we've worked for a long time to try to apply technology to help people with dementia uh, live more independently for longer at home. And the idea is that we focused quite a lot on accommodative care, so providing um, assistance with everyday activities, prompting, reminding technologies. Um, and the Grey Matters focused quite, quite differently on this and, and shifted quite a lot with the, the way that research is moving. So probably the, the, the biggest um, surprise for something like dementia is that there currently is no, no care for, for this condition. Um, and a lot of the research has been looking to move towards modifiable risk factors in order to, um, to deal with this, this condition uh, more appropriately. And I guess our research has moved along in, in that way in more recent years as well. So if we look at prevention strategies uh, within public health, um, particularly for dementia, there's a lot of, of uh, new policies coming out, the, the Blackfriars Incentive, for example, um, looking to in introduce some prevention strategy to reduce the burden of, of dementia. And these sorts of policies really focus on uh, encouraging people to undertake healthy behaviours um, and identifying the risk factors that can attribute to somebody um, developing Alzheimer's disease or dementia, and also delaying the onset of, of Alzheimer's disease. And um, I guess the focus is really around uh, increasing people's awareness of these risk factors and letting them know what they can do to try to reduce their risk of developing Alzheimer's disease in the future. Um, and for that reason, uh, they, these sorts of interventions really focus on the, the middle, mid age range, around 40 to 64 years of age. Um, and have a particular focus on people who have uh, some increased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, whether that be through poor lifestyle or whether it be through some sort of uh, um, uh, family history or genetic um, uh, increase of risk. So there's already quite a body of evidence uh, in the literature and uh, enough that has really led to these sorts of interventions coming through in, into policy already. Uh, and the idea of, of Grey Matters was really to look at modifiable uh, behavioural risk factors that are associated with increased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. And as I said, there's a huge body of, of research that's backed this up um, and, and trying to gain insight into what types of lifestyle behaviours really uh, affect or increase somebody's risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. And in, in fact, around one third of all Alzheimer's disease can be attributed to this sort of lifestyle and behavioural factors. Um, and the, the, the research is really telling us that uh, what's good for your heart is good for your head. So a lot of these will be quite similar to some of the things or some of the preventative measures that we've already seen work and be quite powerful for uh, cardiovascular disease, for example. So it's things like increasing your physical activity, uh, eating healthier uh, that we all know we should do, getting more sleep, becoming more socially active, uh, reducing our stress, increasing Cognitive stimulating activity is quite important for, for dementia in particular, and reducing alcohol consumption and uh, uh, reducing and smoking or smoking sensation. So you can see that there's quite a lot of similarities between intervention programs that are already used for, uh, for example, cardiovascular disease that could be applied for dementia care as well. But uh, Grey Matters focus specifically on, on the task of uh, dementia care. So what is Grey Matters? If my nice technology worked, um, you would see some nice screenshots of, of the app there. Um, basically, it was a, a smartphone application that pushed educational content, 
on edu educational content in the, uh, the form of fact and suggestion pairs. So these were small snippets of uh, scientifically backed facts and then a suggestion of how somebody could complete that fact. So for example, if it was uh, um, oily fish has been shown to uh, impact on, on uh, or reduce your risk of developing uh, dementia, then we might offer some um, suggestion of a, a meal that the person could prepare. The app also allowed the, facilitated the tracking of um, the six domains that we talked about earlier through 12 questions and also the, um, the tracking of uh, physical activity through a wearable um, activity monitor. Um, and then we processed that and had a star rating so people got feedback on how well they were performing against across those six domains with regards to the, the um, the clinical recommendations for, for each of those um, and got some gamification elements in there as well to try to stimulate people to, to reach those targets. And the whole aim, as I said, was to lessen the person's risk of developing Alzheimer's disease uh, through this sort of behaviour change. And I guess when I, when I come and I speak at, at some of these things and we talk about grey matters, a lot of people immediately think, OK, here we go, just one more app. Um, and that's quite... quite uh, an interesting thing to say because we've seen a huge rise in the, in the pervasiveness and the use of smartphones and their application in healthcare. So there's uh, over 100,000 medical focused apps on the healthcare market at the minute. Um, and a lot of these through quite recent literature have been said to be quite inaccurate in terms of the, the quality of the information that's pushed through them. Their development has seen a lack of engagement with uh, both clinical and both stakeholders as well, so people who use these apps, so they're not validated properly. Um, many of the apps that are on the market don't have uh, behaviour change techniques built in, so don't have any fundamental psychological underpinning to the development of the app. Uh, and very few of them are also regulated as well, so very few are regulated as medical devices, very few are built to high, high enough standards that would, that would do uh, medical software, for example. Um, and all of these things can lead to some uh, potential concerns around the, the benefit of, of somebody using one of these apps, particularly for behaviour change. Because you can imagine if somebody is given the wrong information and undertakes the wrong uh, activity and thinks that they're doing something good and they're not, then there's some ethical and also uh, um, potential harm that the app could cause there as well. So uh, Grey Matters tried to be quite different. Um, and I mentioned at the start I'm not a, a, a clinical person, so we worked quite a lot, or we relied quite a lot on our, on our clinical team at Utah State University. We had a strong technical component, obviously, because we were dealing with an, an, an app and the data that can be generated from something like this. Um, and you can see the team there from, from Ulster le really led the technical perspective. And we had uh, Professor Mar Maria Norton, who has uh, 20 years of experience looking at um, risk factor reduction for dementia through the Cache County st study on memory and ageing, um, who really drove all the, the behaviour change techniques and also all of our fact and suggestions and what, uh, what functionality the application should have. And quite interestingly, we also had a, a business development uh, manager who uh, has worked in um, the healthcare technology industry for over 20 years as well. And he guided us on uh, the, the regulations and the quality of our software. So what we were developing was industry standard and cutting edge as well. Um, I mentioned that a lot of apps aren't underpinned by um, psychological underpinning. Um, when I stand in, up here in front of a, lo a lot of psychologists, I'm, I'm quite nervous with something like this behind me. But uh, our, our clinical team really wanted to make sure that our app was developed with um, fundamental be uh, behaviour change techniques in, in mind. Um, and in this case, we used the trans-theoretical model of behaviour change. So I just really wanted to highlight that uh, the application um, is really underpinned throughout the whole process with uh, psychological models of behaviour change, as well as scientific rigour behind the facts and suggestions that we apply or push to these, these individuals as well. Um, the other thing that we did to try to differentiate ourselves from these hundreds of thousands of apps that are on the, the, app, star, the app store is to look and benchmark our app against other ones that are available out there. Um, so we had the, the app ranked by five independent reviewers um, across uh, a lot of domains. Um, which looked at the subjectivity of the, the educational information, how it engaged with the user um, and what information it fed back, um, the functionality from a behaviour change perspective, uh, the aesthetics and, and the quality of the information that was pushed through the app. And uh, Grey Matters really performed 
um, much higher than any of the apps that were that were undertaken in this evaluation. So right from the beginning, we had stakeholder engagement, we had evaluations, and the app was developed through an iterative design process to make sure before we trialled it that it, it had the right functionality and the right uh, qualities to make it effective. Um, the other point that differentiates us from other health apps is that we have tried to scientifically validate this app as well. So we trialled it with uh, 146 uh, participants recruited in the Cache County area of uh, Utah State. Um, um, the app being quite a major um, part of the intervention. The app was trialled for, for six months um, and it was a, an app and wearable as I already talked about. Um, and this was a randomised control trial, so we had 42 people who, who didn't use the app as well. So the results, when we look specifically at, at the app itself, were, were really positive. So across all of the six um, domains that we, that we looked at, we've seen positive trends in, in those behaviours, which we were delighted with. And also we've seen the, the uh, uh, adoption of, of those behaviours with the cohort that we were dealing with. Uh, and this was m most... Uh, most uh, relative in um, intrinsic motivation to change. So people who used this app had, a, had more motivation to make changes to the lifestyle interventions we're putting in place. Uh, we've seen a decrease in memory concerns, increase in social engagement, and increase in, in good cholesterol. Um, and the, probably the most important thing from a technology point of view for somebody like me is uh, the more often that the app was launched, the greater those changes were. So people who engaged with the technology more seen better increases in, across those uh, six domains. Um, and you can see that that was uh, particularly the case in uh, re reduction in, or changes in BMI. Um, so people who launched the app the most seen greater reductions in their BMI. The feedback from, from our, our users was also very positive as well, so um, generally people like to use the app and they found it quite engaging to use, the feedback they, they enjoyed, um, and it really made them consciously uh, think about the decisions that they were making in their life. Um, so just some, some nice testimonies there about the application itself. Uh, one of the probably not so striking things when we look at how uh, Fitbit and those other technologies are performing um, from a consumer perspective is that we've seen sustained engagement with the technology to be a problem. So this shows the number of uh, responses provided through our 12 questions in, in the app over the, the weeks that it was tested. And you can see when we, uh, when we told people that the, the study was coming to an end, um, we've seen a, a huge decrease in the number of people that were engaging with the, the app. So we still need to do some work in how do we sustain the engagement with the technology. Um, um, what, uh, what intelligent ways can, can we um, promote people to, to stay engaged with, with the solutions that we provide? Um, and that really uh, leads me on quite nicely to some of our, our future work. Um, so we're looking at making uh, the recording of this in information a lot more automated. So wearable technology for counting steps, for example, is, is very, very powerful. You just put the wearable on, as long as it's charged, you're collecting that information. So we want to look at ways that we can collect more behavioural information automatically using sensors both from the smartphone and, and inside the home. Um, we want to make the, the, the app more contextual, contextually aware. Um, and personalised for the individual that's using it, so we know what, uh, what your behaviour trends are and we can personalise our facts and suggestions directly for that person. Um, we also want to try to create and increase the interact interactivity and the motivational aspects of the app, be that through social engagement or through gamification, um, and potentially uh, uh, um, adding some incentives to, to try to keep that sustained engagement up. Um, so discounts off uh, exercise classes, um, some discount off a local supermarket, um, things like that. Um, so moving just to look at, uh, beginning to conclude the presentation, um, we've really found that technology is a, a good facilitator for these sorts of interventions. Uh, it makes the information um, widely accessible for, and instantly accessible for the population that we're dealing with and allows us to um, change that information um, and update it as, as we go throughout the intervention. The use of smartphones in particular offer a really highly interactive and engaging um, experience for the user so we can do things like gamification we can give real-time feedback um, on what somebody's input to the app and we can also personalize that information as well it also gives us the opportunity to, re to reach large and diverse audiences so in our pilot study we only targeted uh, the cash county area 146 users is quite a small amount of users 
But we envisage that if we release something like this onto the market and start to engage with companies like Fitbit or like Withings, then we can reach a much, much broader and diverse market. Um, and we're also currently piloting the app in uh, Rome and, and hopefully later in the year in Northern Ireland as well. Um, it also allows, uh, we found, uh, to build a network of, of sharing and social support through uh, social networking. So people were beginning to share uh, their cookery um, lessons and things through, through social networking, which we see as a, a big beneficial of technology. Um, and uh, personalization and anon anonymity. So people through our app could uh, post and, and get some feedback from a, a, a health professional um, or ask questions from a health, health professional without having to go and do that interaction face to face, um, which in, in some cases they find quite comforting as well. So uh, just in summary then, um, I think the, the work that we've done on, on Grey Matters um, and particularly the work that um, Professor Norton from Utah State has really highlighted the need to, to look at these risk reduction strategies, particularly for dementia, um, and highlighted the importance of making them multi-domain. So a lot of the, the interventions for risk reduction have focused on increasing physical ac activity, but we need to do a, a multi-domain type in intervention, particularly for dementia. Um, we're also finding that these have to be tailored for cultural and uh, personal backgrounds. So, for example, something that works in the Utah state may not be necessarily transferable into our, our pilot in Rome or the pilot here in, in Ireland. Um, but we do see technology as a, a key facilitator of, of reaching large and diverse populations. So, uh, we, we really feel that um, um, our results have shown that uh, technology can benefit these sorts of interventions and increase the effectiveness of them. Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, so I think that um, we should really be looking to, to leverage these more. And I know the e-health strategies, for example, um, in Northern Ireland are, are really talking about the use of technology across the, the whole sector, but behaviour change in, in particular we're finding is, is something very, very useful to look at. So that's it for now. Thank you.